Hi everyone, welcome to the Lunar Library. Today we're actually going to be talking about some books. I actually got a request to specifically discuss these four books. They're almanacs, um, well this one's a date book, but they're almanacs uh, focused on 2021 and um, a community member was wondering what the difference is between all of them were, if it's worth getting all of them, um, or just picking and choosing. So I'm gonna take you to look at these and make that decision for yourself. I do have some thoughts on it, but let's go look at what they all contain and see if it's worth getting all of them or what fits you. But first, before we do that, I'm going to unbox some stickers. Just a very quick unboxing. I picked up this little tiny box of stickers at Target. It was literally a dollar. I couldn't resist. And I just wanted to see the Halloween stickers. So first we're going to open this and see what's in. So first things first. Despite my best efforts, the cats have been sleeping on here. So <laughs> there's some cat hair and some folds trying. I'm trying. So it's eight stickers um, and I think they're just like the ones up here but I really wanted to look at them so let's open them and see. What I'm really excited about this is that there's how many books? Eight books. Eight stickers per book. Eight stickers per book which I'm really excited about so I'll have lots of them. They're just for me, but I'll have lots of duplicates to just uh, use and not worry about like, oh, I really love the sticker. I can't commit to using it, you know? So the first page has a little bat, a cat and a witch hat and a pumpkin, cute little witch, and a moon, which we love, you know? Uh, second page just has some candy. Uh, I'm definitely going to use these stickers a lot more, especially the moon, and the cat is so cute, um, but the candy is going to be cute for certain things. It's the same in every single book. Quick, cheap stickers. Um, I think they're super cute, so I'll take them. So here we've got four different. We've got the witch's date book. An actual planner, an actual date book with some information in it for every week. Um, we've got the Sabbath's Almanac that has information about each, um, not each holiday, but the major holidays um, throughout the year. We've got the Magical Almanac that has a bunch of different things um, for information throughout the year. And then we've got the Spell a Day Almanac, um, which is different things to do, sometimes according to the specific um, phase of the moon or um, a holiday coming up, but also sometimes it's just, here's a spell. Maybe it'll be useful. So we're going to look at each of these and see if they're useful for you and if they're worth buying every single year. So let's see. Let's start with the date book. This is an actual date book planner, what have you. Um, it has a monthly view and then has a weekly view with different things for each week. Um, so I like this. I like this. This is very useful if you still use a physical planner, which I do. Um, in theory. <laughs> I'm bad at using it in practice, but I like it in theory. Um, it's really useful for writing down stuff and also, um, so you see like there's a color of the day, there's, um, there's, a, um, lunar and astrology things, um, information. I don't really know, um, 
astrology at all, so I don't know what that all means, but it's one of those things that I'm probably going to look into in the coming years, so it'll be useful. Um, the other thing is that there's information. So there's the table of contents. And before you get act into the actual date part, um, see there's the planets and the signs. Uh, so it has this information about reading all that. Um, and then there's best days for planting and harvesting on calendar pages. Um, there's a little information on how to charm the book. Um, and then there's information about um, renewing that charm at every equinox, which is nice. Um, and then there's some information about spiral dancing, um, uh, individual practice practitioners between or reaching out between communities, just like little information. And then um, I really like this, the cast a spell on your social media. I really like this bit. I read this earlier. Um, that's like using sigils to, um, like really enhance your social media and stuff. So that's nice information. And then creating your book of shadows, just very good beginner information, which I am working on my book of shadows. So just, just a little beginner information if this is your first time picking up a witch's date book. And then we get into the calendar. So we've got our monthly calendar review. We've got um, U.S. centric holidays. And then we've got like inauguration day. Oh, okay. We're, we'll deal with that when we get there. Um, sun enters Aquarius. There's the cold moon. Mercury retrograde. Uh, which we are currently in a Mercury retrograde. But yeah, so as I said, there's um, astrology stuff, the color of the day. Um, there's um, these are the icons for whether it's um, a good for planting or harvesting. And then every month has its own recipe. Now, I don't cook, but I think this is really interesting that every month has its own recipe that are not necessarily magical they're just food recipes right and just really good and for the specific seasons so um i like that and then and then there's little bits like olive wood brings peace and prosperity um, just, just little information. Rivers relate to water and motion, washing away impurities. Just tidbits of information. Um, Paka is the Hawaiian god of air. Um, I just, I like that. So, and then every month, so every month has a recipe, has a yoga pose, um, and then there's a little drawing, and then there's another recipe, and information about the moon that we're in which these are the celtic moons these are not the um native american common moons um like the corn moon and stuff these are the celtic moons so it's interesting to read about these um so it's very it's definitely very celtic focused and then here's another good winter recipe granola um, and then the rowan moon is the month of is the moon of January, and it's also um, noted that it is the cold moon. That just kind of repeats for every month. Um, there's recipe, yoga pose, a little drawing, and moon. And uh, it just repeats. And I just, I find it, this is going to be really useful for just general information. Um, like, it'll be nice to read about something every day. Healthy fear is the domain of the rabbit. Uh, put houseplants in green flower pots to encourage growth. Hmm, mine are in green flower pots. Maybe that's the problem. Um, but yeah, so little tidbits. Um, this is a good, this is a good date book to have if you use date books and want to just know a little bit about, like, every day. Um, so, so I find, I think this is going to be very useful. 
and I'm looking forward to using it. So this starts um, in January. Um, and then there's just a little bit in the back that's just um, daily magical influences, color correspondences, uh, the moon's sign. Um, a little, just a little bit of information, gemstones, herbs, and the dates of the eclipses and full moons and retrogrades. Um, so I found this to be a really nice... Um, thing that I will probably pick up every year if I actually use it as a planner just because it's good to have that um, information on hand at a quick glance I like this plus it's a way to keep track of my life you know so next we have the magical almanac for 2021 practical magic for everyday living so we've got a table of contents and it's break, broken down into each element. So there's spells for earth magic, air magic, and then there's the actual almanac, and then fire magic, water magic, and coloring magic, which again goes into the color correspondences. Um, it's the same publishing company, so it's that is a bit of the same information, um, but it's honestly such a small bit that it doesn't overlap too much but there's um, there's a bunch of like just spells they're just very um, like they're not specific to any um, any specific date on the calendar or anything they're just information to get you through through the year um, grounding and centering Two point location spells. Uh, yeah, so this is just um, a lot of general information. And we get to the almanac part, um, which is each day is ruled by a planet that possesses specific magical influences, the lunar phases, the moon signs. Um, and then color and incense of the day, holidays and festivals. So we've got the Sabbaths and full moons, and then we've got them in the Southern Hemisphere, which I like that they included this. Um, I love when things include the Southern Hemisphere because so often it's not included. But the other, the date book is very U.S. centric with holidays and stuff, so it's uh, nice that this is not. Um, and then, so here, this is the almanac part. So we've got the specific Monday, waning moon, moon phase, color, moon sign, and incense of the day is different on here. This is not included in the date book. So this is just, um, it's just a list of you through the month, through the months. Um, and you've got birthstones. Uh, so like this isn't this is a nice quick reference, but it's not laid out like the date book. Um, it's not laid out by week or anything. It's just what fits on the page um, through through the month. So this is the almanac part of it. So again, quick glance info. And then we get back to the spells and the magic part, um, the fire magic, and then we had water magic, stuff about halos, the only love spell you'll ever need is a self-love spell, I like that. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of, here's the water magic, there's a lot of, um, a lot of different spells, but they're not specific to, um, the date on the calendar, which might be what you're looking for, might not be what you're looking for. Here's weather magic, potion making, it's a lot of, um, still, like, still one-on-one kind of stuff, right? Uh, vision boards as magical spells. I do like that this book is very um, modern, you know? I like seeing, um, like they have a spell about about social media. I like seeing 
witchcraft updated for the modern world uh, because we are in the modern world and it makes sense and it doesn't traditions are great but not everything has to be like they practice exactly 400 years ago you know so it has the date information um, but that's not the strength of this book the strength of this book is all the spells and all the information that's included in here um, so I would say get this for the um, the bulk of the book is not even the almanac part um, like this is just this is the almanac the yearly almanac information um, but the bulk of it is all all these spells all these different elemental um, practices and, and applications of magic so I would say that's the strength of this book but it's going to be a lot of 101 beginner information so if you're more practiced it, this might not be for you but if you're starting out it's a pretty good resource the next one we've got Sabbath's almanac which actually this actually starts at Samhain, which is coming up, but it's coming up, so it actually starts in 2020. So if you want this, you gotta get it soon. I mean, you can get it later, but if you want it for the whole year, um, you gotta get it soon. So this is about the holidays, the Sabbaths. And it's just got specific, specific information to each holiday coming up in the next year. So this one is very specific to the year to an extent. They talk about how there's a full moon on Halloween this year and they talk about the Mercury retrograde and actually that we're in a I think four different retrogrades at the end of this month. And not only is it a full moon, it's a blue moon. So there's a lot of energy going on. So this specifically talks about this specific year. But it does talk about the general information of Samhain. I will say I didn't particularly like this person's contributions to this book, but she only contributed to this Samhain section. I flipped through. Her contributions were very, very, um, really focused on her ancestors who came over on the Mayflower and settled here with no... It seemed to kind of romanticize that without, um, you know, any acknowledgement of the implications of that for the native people who were living here. Not even like a little byline or anything. So that made me uncomfortable, but it was the only one and it's just, just this, this little bit. So, every holiday has the cosmic sway. Evo Dominguez is actually someone who's on my radar because he was on the podcast that I listened to. So, that was interesting to see a name that I actually recognize because I don't recognize a lot of names in the magical world. This goes over the astrology part of when the holidays are happening. And then we have tales and traditions of each holiday. And then we have the feasts and treats. So, I mean, Halloween, we know, is all about, like, candy. But there's a lot of different things to the harvest and all that. So, recipes for a bunch of things that celebrate the season. And then there's crafty craft section, which I'm really excited to do a lot of these things. So, decorative skulls, and candy corn candles that I am looking forward to making. 
And then we have some spells. Pumpkin protection spell. Masks. Trick or treat safety spells. So there's spe spells that will help you for each holiday. And then there's the rituals. Again, honoring my ancestors as Samhain. I know the... I know Samhain is important for ancestral magic and everything. It's just... She was a little too focused on the Mayflower. I don't know. She's like, I'll go back in time on the board of the Mayflower, and there's a waxing moon I had in another nine days. We'll see land. I don't know. Just the way this was written, just it really put me off. And I'm saying as someone who had ancestors come over on the Mayflower as well, it just, um, it, it kind of... It didn't sit right with me, but it was the only one, and she didn't contribute any other things to the book, so it's a little blip on the radar. And then, every holiday, every major holiday, has the same things. It has cosmos, it has tales and traditions, feasts and treats, crafts. And spells and rituals. Each of these are like really, really good for information for every major holiday. If you're not familiar or not super familiar, this is a really good information book. I recommend it. I would recommend it to people who are just starting out, who just want to know a lot more. It's really good information on getting started with all of the major, um, the major holidays. But again, if you're a more practiced witch, this probably won't be for you. And also, it's very specific to, you know, um, people who celebrate Samhain, Beltane, and and all that. So then not everyone celebrates um, not everyone follows the major holidays of the pagan tradition. So, again, if you don't follow that, then this will be of no use to you. But if you are interested in reading about them and reading about the traditions and how to understand them a bit more, this is a really good book for that. And then the last book that we have to look at is Witch's Spell a Day Almanac. I was excited for this one just to get to know more little spells that I could do every single day. You know, not not that I would do them all every day, but little spells to work into my daily practice. So we've got um, icons for each type of spell and uh, <laughs> if you want like if you want to look at if you want to look up a specific kind of spell you can just do a quick glance and then this is every day is a vertical um, it's not set out like a calendar but every day is vertical. It has, again, the color of the day and incense of the day, um, the astrological um, phase. And um, if there's a moon phase or anything, that's included. So that's a little bit of crossover information, but that's not the focus of this book at all. The focus is little spells every single day. Sometimes they correspond to like the day, um, but mostly they're just, here. here's a spell. <laughs> I like it. I like that there's just these little spells for useful information. Um, I do wish there was more spells that were like this is what's going on astrologically or this is um, uh, 
a holiday. Let's make, let's do a spell for that. I do wish there was that, uh, more of that. There is some of that, but I do wish I was, there was more of that. But for basic little spells, um, this is, this is a really good resource, which is fine with me, um, just getting into my craft. And even if you're, I honestly think this would be fine for people who are more experienced because um, it's not very specific and there might be like a lot of spells that you've never come across um, because there are 365 spells in here. Um, see like in bulk cleansing um, is specific to this time of year. And that's one of the major holidays. But yeah, so there's some of that, but it, most of them are very general that you can use all all year long, um, which is going to be nice to have on hand, so that I can be like I can read this every day. I can read a spell every day, and then next year they're not specific, so I can. Just be like, oh yeah, what was that spell? And go back and look at it. So there is information, like a little bit of information about every month, but most of the spells are not um, specific. <laughs> a queer love spell for Pride Month. Straight people can use this too. Just, <laughs> just alter the symbolism to fit your desired relationship. So, I think this will be a really good resource. I'm interested to get into it and uh, see what kind of spells are really in here that you can quickly do every single day. I'm I'm excited for it. Um, and then, so yeah, so here's information about the moon sign, astrological symbols, the other magical influences. Lunar phases. Again, a little bit of crossover information. There's even a glossary of magical terms, which is really good for beginners if you are not familiar with stuff. And then, just information about the authors. So, overall, there's a lot of information in this in these books. Some of it might be what you're looking for. Some of it might not be what you're looking for. Um, not a lot of crossover in the information. There's some information that's specific to this coming year, especially with the Sabbath's Almanac. Maybe you'll want to pick up um, the Spell a Day Almanac every year for a lot of different spells to have on hand. I don't see myself getting... The Magical Almanac or the Sabbath's Almanac every single year, but it does have a lot of really interesting information. I do see myself definitely getting the Witch's Day book every year if I use it. Um, that's, that's the catch, right? That's the catch. And I'll probably, maybe not every year, get the Spell and Daily Almanac, but pick it up every once in a while. Um, because having more um, spells and more information is never a bad thing. But yeah, for the most part, I say get all of them one year. I'm glad that I got them all this year so that I could compare and start um, next year with all this information, especially as a new witch, um, have all this information. But I don't think you'll have to buy every single one every year, but it's a uh, good information to have on hand. And I'm really glad that I bought them this year just so I could compare and see what um, would work. But yeah, not, not a whole lot of crossover, just about the specific dates and phases and stuff. But other than that, um, all of them are really good resources. So if you're interested in any of these, I would recommend them. I have Amazon affiliate links to buy all of them down in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will catch you next month with another witch book review. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more and I will catch you later. Have a magical day.